my A-level results. There are a lot of videos covering my A-level results, not mine personally, you know, their A-level results, but mine weren't straightforward. For starters, they wouldn't even let me on the course. I had to appeal and then they made fatal mistakes that cost everyone grades. If you want to know the story of my A-level results, then stick around. But if you want to just know what I got, I'll put a timestamp below so you can just click it, have a seat, and I'll see you in the next video. So, A-level results. So even before I got into A-levels, as you might know, I failed my GCSEs. But I did go on to pass them and that is a and I am planning a video on how I did get my GCSE, so you might want to subscribe and stick around for that. Now I only ever did them because I needed them to get a job. I needed GCSE maths, I needed GCSE English. But this college naturally sat me down at some stage and said, Look, you're gonna have five GCSEs, why don't you do A levels with us? You know, you've got some three years of education left, you know, just give it a go. My response was, Well, you're not gonna let me in because your requirements for A-levels is not just five GCSEs, there's actually a point system involved, which means I would need to have pretty much A's and B's to get my average up. And he said, no, that's fine, that's fine. You know, just get your five GCSEs, grade C and above, and you can do A-levels. Great, I'll think about it. The more I thought about it over the summer before my GCSE results, I thought, you know what, it would be good just to give A-levels a go. Let's just see how far I get. Results day came and yeah, I've got my five GCSEs. I've got one B and four Cs. Great, let's do A-levels. Uh, no. What do you mean, no? Well, you've not, uh, you've got five GCSEs, yes, well done, but your points is not where we need them to be. Oh, yeah, that, that's, I, I, yeah, I know that. I, I, I thought that myself. But yeah, the, the advisor person said, it'll be fine. It'll be fine, won't it? No. So naturally I got a bit upset, uh, I was, and uh, you know I got in touch with the, the, the careers advisor at college who said I could stay there and he said, oh log in an appeal, just say I told you that. Um, I had the support of my teachers I had at GCSE as well, so I did this appeal and I took it to this uh, this manager guy who was um, running the um, like the admissions I guess or whatever you want to call it and uh, I'll never forget his name, I'm not going to put it on camera but I did not like this person. He literally sat there with my, uh, just pretend these are my GCSE results and my appeal for and he literally said the words, uh, I'll do the actions as well, he literally went, you're going to fail. And I was crushed, and this is not like in a private room, this was in the middle of the, the college library where everybody was signing on to the courses that year, and it was embarrassing, it was horrible. I didn't actually get a decision there, and then I had to go away, I had to just leave. Um, there was another course that the college was doing I could um, go on to, so I just went there, it was some sort of a construction, which was really not appropriate for what I wanted to do. But nonetheless, the day after, I, I did get the phone call saying, look, we've appealed, we're happy for you to come on, but there are some conditions. And I really wanted to do A-level, so I just accepted it. The conditions were I couldn't do a science A-level, and that actually included psychology. And I'm, I was really disappointed, because one, I've got a GCSE in psychology. I did it at this college. I've got a GCSE in biology as well, but I want to do psychology at uni. Thankfully, they accepted that, and they let me do psychology. I did film, studies, and IT. So, you know, I accepted that. I was happy. I got to do A-levels. I could only do three. Sorry, that was a condition as well. I could only do three A-levels. I wanted to do four. I was going to drop one at the second year, but but there you have it. I'm now doing it, and it was all going fine. You know, I'm going in every day. I'm trying hard. And now, when it came to A level ICT, there was a part of our specification about web design, building website. But apparently, it wasn't going to come on the exam. The teacher just knew it wasn't going to come on the exam. Guess what came on the exam? So this was my. January exam, you know, the first set of exams in AS levels. I went in the, in the exam thinking, well, websites won't come up, and they did, and the results were a U. I actually got, I'm not sure if you can see it, sorry. I actually got a U. I got 27 out of 80 marks, and nobody in that class got beyond a C. Some got a D, which is still a very good grade, but, you know, a U. I wanted better, and... You know, here you are telling me that I won't pass A-levels. Well, this is why. You're giving incorrect information. And just to show my ability, I mean, for psychology, for my first exam, I got a D, which is still a passing grade. It's still good. So I did have capacity at A-level. This was also frustrating because it also meant I had to resit the IT exam along my summer exams, you know, my second set, which made things a little bit harder. But I persevered, I tried hard, and these were my results for the end of the first year of A-levels. Two Bs and a D. So, you know, I told you I did a, um, an exam in IT and I got a U. Well, I resat that exam and got an A. Boom. Okay, I took a revision in my own hands. I studied everything and I got it right. Where I got a D in psychology in my first set exams, I didn't resit that exam, but for my second exam in psychology, I got an A, which pushed my average to a B. Then for film, 
I got a D. I just missed out on the C, but I took that. So yes, overall, just in case I confused you, for AS level, I got two Bs and a D. So moving on to A2. A2, second year of A levels, which is notoriously harder. And it was, I did find it really difficult. But then again, we're on to the second mistake a teacher made. So I absolutely adored this teacher, I have to say it. Um, I absolutely loved it. She was brilliant, but like most teachers, all she was trying to do for us was predict the next paper. Now, to be fair, she probably did say revise every topic just in case, but she said the questions that came on last year's paper would definitely not be on this year's paper. And guess what happened? <laughs> last year's questions actually, well, some of them came up on this year's paper, and most of us haven't revised it because we thought it was near impossible the same questions will come up two years in a row. So to be honest, we have to take some responsibility for that because we should be revising every subject and the teacher is just making a prediction. So in that subject, I got an E. So it wasn't a U, but it was still an E. And this is second year of A levels. The pressure is building up. I've only got one half a year left. I was panicking a little bit. And as you can see, what I did here, they were all my calculations to what I needed to get in my next exams to achieve a C. And the E brought me down so much that I just I had to get like a really high A to still get a C overall. So I had to reset that psychology exam. Again, I'm resetting based on a teacher's advice. And again, I'm sort of making my life harder because I've got to reset another exam. And at this time, it's the end of the second year of A-levels. This is when it's all coming to a close. I should be going to university if I if all goes well. In January of my second year of A-levels, I also got a D in IT, which was unfortunate. I got no one else to blame but myself. So I had to reset that one as well. So I'm resetting two exams alongside my summer exams. So yes, second year of A-levels, second part of it it was looking really tough and it was kind of frightening because I really wanted to go to university and um, I didn't think I could actually resit another year because I really resat my GCSEs and um, so I think I ran out of three years of education which is how it works in the UK and um, so I was in a little bit of trouble if I didn't actually pass to my regret I don't actually have the paper where I passed I sent them off somewhere they never sent them back but yes my final A level results turned out to be just so you know I was applying to university I needed a B and two C's to get into my firm choice and I needed three C's to get into my insurance for film studies, which I got a D at AS level, I actually got a B, which meant I got a C overall. Got me first C, fantastic. Next onto ICT, which I got a B in AS level. So when it came on to my second year of A levels, I actually got a C, which got me a C overall. Two Cs. Goes on to psychology, my strongest subject. If I was ever to get a B in a subject, it would have been psychology. And I just missed out by 10 marks and I got a C. Three Cs, I got into my insurance choice. But wait, my firm choice actually accepted me anyway. <laughs> he actually said, well, I know you didn't get the grades, but we'll let you in anyway. A lot of universities do that. It was fine. I got to go with my firm choice. I got my three C's and I did pass. Let's just go back to the beginning of this video where the admissions manager person was like, you're not going to pass. Well, I did. I passed quite well, I think. And I'm very happy with how I achieved. And I'm very happy with myself because I came from a position of failing GCSEs and now I've got three A-levels, grade C, and I'm going to university. If you want to know how my journey at university went, because it didn't go smoothly either, I might have failed a year, then let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a video on that. I might be doing it anyway, I haven't decided yet. If you've got any questions about my AS, A2, A-level results, need any advice, leave them in the comments below. Social media, as always, is actually going to be over here. And thank you for watching this video. I hope your A-levels, GCSE, whatever exams, results you're expecting, I hope you achieved them and I wish you all.